hello and welcome to the show. Today's ready car build is going to be a little bit different as I don't know what I'm using yet. I'm going to use the game's wheel spin system to randomly select me a car that I am then going to build up and yeah, take down the rally course, see how it fares. Now, We'll point out that it is possible that the wheel spin will give me a car that is not going to work. If it starts off with too high a PI or a vehicle has already gone down the course, I will spin again until we win something else to use. Oh, not quite a Renault 5 Turbo. That would have been an interesting uh, <laughs> an interesting vehicle to uh, to take down here. Yeah, don't know. Don't know what we're going to end up with other than probably a lot of money because my luck with the Horizon wheel spins is Pretty damn shocking. We haven't even seen a Horizon Edition car come up yet. Uh, nope, we're not going to be uh, winning a car this time. Now, that would be nice. A 22B in Pretza would be very nice to win. Oh, I mean, I would have taken the Sierra either. That would have, mm, that's, disappointing. that's a sad wheel spin to end on with those two options either side of it. Um, come on, game. You can give me a give me a car. Just, just a car. A car will do. Uh, probably not too fair. You're not listening very well, are you, game? Come on. This time around, okay, got another chance at this 22B. It really wants to give me the 22B in Pretzer, and I'd be more than happy to have the 22B in Pretzer. Nope, instead you're going to give me 30,000, rather than another in Pretzer that was below it. California would make for an interesting rally car. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how well suited that would be. We're going to get some money. We almost got a Firebird. Come on, game! You can give me something of something of use in uh, in this one. What have we got? So another two thousand. I have not. I'm going to be broke by the time we get a car. Ah, the third appearance of the twenty-two B. Surely this time around, you might you might deem it kind. No, nope, no, nope, you're not going to. You're not going to be kind enough to grant me a car. The, I mean, I'd be very very happy to have the Mini Horizon Edition, although we have run a Mini down here. And nope, that's fifty thousand credits. I should, probably shouldn't bother saying anything. Uh, oh, there's another. <laughs> Three Horizon Edition cars possible in a row, and it'd be a BAC Mono this time that we're not going to get. Well, we do have our car. BMW Z4 is going to be our rally vehicle here. I have not touched a Z4 in a Horizon game for a long time. I'm trying to even think about... Did I drive one in six? Probably not. I might have driven one in five. Is there a... Um, I guess I might have had a career race at some point with a Z4. I don't think it gets the Z4. Not a bad car. Uh, certainly, I, I would say a be better looking car than the uh, the Z3. I would prefer one over over a Z3. But uh, yeah, it's not a car that I particularly think about. But that's the point of having a series uh, like this, because it gives you a, uh, a random vehicle to use. Starts off as A-Class. Okay. So we're not going to be getting the most crazy levels of power out of this. Uh... Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to be still getting five, six hundred horsepower, maybe. I don't know. We're going to convert it to all-wheel drive, get it on some, get it on some rally tires, and then see what PI we've got left to play with. So, uh, engine swap, we're probably not going to be. Well, we're not going to be doing it unless we have to, and I doubt we're going to have to do an engine swap to get this to the top of S1 class. So, we will give it the uh, all-wheel drive. We will give it the off-road compound tires. That already puts us up into S1 class. Which is a, a little bit of a shame. We'll get some nice racing brakes on that. They'd shoot, uh, <laughs> shoot plenty of the uh, the braking stats out. So hopefully it'll be a decent. I'm hoping it'll be a good handling car. I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure. Weight wise, but that actually hasn't uh, added on too much PI, which is nice. Definitely nice in all of this. And I am going to want things like a roll cage. I'm going to want the chassis rigidity if we're going to be tackling a very nasty, very, very bumpy course. We are also going to be wanting for the aero parts. Yes, it does add PI. The front added PI, the rear wing's taken PI off. It's definitely worth having. Just I, I want to be able to carry the corner speed, so it makes sense to really add those on. Now, tyre widths, we can get 255s on the front, and we're probably going to get two 295s on the rear. Pretty good. Pretty good all around on the Z4. Uh, power. Power, indeed. Let's see how much we can get. So it does come... I actually know it's wind turbocharged. Well, you learned something new. Uh, <laughs> we will get the turbos upgraded. We'll get the exhaust upgraded. Uh, that's okay. That's a little bit more. Like, I was going to say, I was slightly worried about PI. Uh, the engine wasn't getting as much power. We're going to be getting 500 plus horsepower. This is going to be more powerful than the Ferrari. Uh, not by a huge amount. It is considerably heavier. 
Uh, we will, oh, I should probably actually, before I go do any more of that, have a look at Gearbox. Okay, we can add the Gearbox in for no PI. That's always helpful. And I will add the diff in as well. Okay, these are all like next to no PI gain. So we'll probably stick the engine bits on and then come back for them. Uh, shall we go? Because I know that does save us a little bit of weight. I'll try and save weight as and when I can on the car. Uh, none of these are going to be any weight saving measures. Uh, I think valves may be. Oh, we would have put valves on the car. Okay. Uh, we're getting about 550 horsepower. 550 horsepower and what was that? 516 torque. Probably not going to find much better than that. And then I'll go and try and take the what little bits of weight I can off here. Oh, we're going to be so close to getting it under 3,000 pounds, but it's not going to be enough, is it? Nope. Nope. Not quite. Hmm. Well, there we go. That is, that is our car. It is perhaps not got the greatest power to weight ratio that we have that we have seen. Still not too bad though, I don't think. And I'm hoping, hoping it'll be a nice handling car. There is only one way though that we are going to find that out. It is off to the Reservoir Trail for the BMW Z4. It is going to get three runs down this course. It attempted to go quicker than the Ram Runner. Our current lead has a time to 29.8. That, I think, might be a little bit out of the reach of the Z4. If uh, history is anything to go by in this series, I would expect the BMW perhaps to be around the, uh, the Ferrari, the 288 that went out last time is perhaps the uh, the sort of the sort of area of the table we are looking at with the BMW. I have been wrong about vehicles before and cars have certainly surprised us in these series so you don't quite know this thing is certainly driving nicely on the opening tarmac corner. That's a lot of speed but it's easily flat out through turn one and turn two. It was as quick if not a little bit faster perhaps than the Ferrari. I'm liking, I am liking this Z4 so far, although got to make sure that we get it turned. It's got a little bit of a bump on the way off of the bridge. Speaking of bumps, it's going to be the first big test of the car across these. That is a really nasty, kind of a secondary bump almost, when you land the car, wants to fire the, the front up into the air, just as you need to turn in. And these corners are flat out in these cars. These are absolutely flat out through here. As I say that though, I haven't got it turned in well enough. I think it should be flat out. I just took a wonky as line. Oh, we're going to end up in the tree. No, we actually stayed out of the tree. God, we can go so late on the brakes as well in this car. Oh, we're going to have a tiny bit of oversteer. Don't overcorrect too much though, otherwise you are going to end up soaring into the trees. Yeah, not a huge amount of jump, although pretty good through the water. 109 miles an hour. Not bad for a, uh, what would have been to start with a relatively low slung sports car so to be taking that sort of speed there is pretty good going now as we saw our way up across the next of the jumps yeah, it's dealing with the, the heavy impacts pretty well as long as you've got it lined up on takeoff the car seems to uh, seem to be handling it yeah I'm, I'm you know I'm liking the Z4 this is probably going to be another car that's great fun to drive much like the Ferrari and the RX7 it's going to be great to drive but uh, perhaps struggle overall to keep pace with some of the very, very top cars. As we now jump our way towards the next turn, we're going to take a, a tighter line down here, try and stop the car from bouncing around too much. It's actually looking like a pretty damn solid opening run from the Z4. Can we line it all up? That would really have to do very much fighting whatsoever with the car. Not quite maintaining as much speed over here as the Ferrari. I was slightly too far to the left. Uh, <laughs> I saw the, the the speed loss that we got on the landing, which weren't carrying as much speed as that 288. And yeah, I may have I may have drifted a little far to the left. That is uh, my bad on that uh, <laughs> secondary jump. Was looking like a pretty solid first run up until then. Yeah, 239.6 with a crash in the tree isn't too bad to to be beginning with. Definitely time to be found in this car. So it is on to the second run through the course. Definitely don't want to be ending up in the trees on the final section. Very, very easy mistake to make on this. On this course, you're carrying so much speed across such huge jumps that uh, a little bit out of position on takeoff and yeah, you can get yourself into a world of trouble. Now, oh, no, that was a little bit too, 
<laughs> I tried to throw it into turn two with that bit too much speed, and you just get the squeal of tyres and a lot of understeer as the car is not going to and not going to grip. We do need to be a little bit slower on the turning to that corner. Everywhere else, though, yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels a, a pretty, pretty damn solid car to drive. No real major, major con major concerns, major complaints with the car. We've got plenty of turn in the back end. We'll let go, but I suspect anything that you're throwing about on dirt across all of the horrible bumps that this has to deal with, the back end probably will let go through heavy cornering. It's certainly being flat out down here, uh, along with the best of them, quite frankly. We can get it turned around there. Yeah, lost the back end ever so slightly, but have got away with it. Slightly crooked on takeoff is never good news. Oh, we're going to bounce off the wall on the outside. Yeah, <laughs> as we came up that hill, I just lost the back end at all of the wrong moment. We're going to lose the back end out there. That was millimetres away from some trees. The Z4 is liking the foliage around here in Australia. It is uh, exploring every possible area of the track. I think I'm just pushing the car that little, little bit too hard in a couple of places. We can, we can ask a lot of this car and it will deliver. But of course... There is still going to be a limit on everything. I'm, I'm impressed with actually how well a lot of these cars are, are managing, though, around this circuit. That's another big kick of oversteer, but perfectly controlled from the car. Oh, I've run it in way, way too deep. Uh, when I make like a mistake on a, on a run like this, I tend to just sort of throw the car at corners and see what sticks and what doesn't, seeing as the run is, you know, was, was over pretty early on. It's kind of a case of, yeah, just sort of see, see what I can get away with, what works, what doesn't work. And if I end up making another mistake, it doesn't matter as long as I've learned something. And yeah, there, there are certainly limits to the car. Oh, I had to have a little lift as it started bobbling around. Definitely much better off. Oh, that's what it's doing. Figured out what it's doing. We have kept it out of the trees that time. As we're landing, as we're hitting the ground from that first jump, the car's actually getting turned left. Now... I'm hoping... Oh, no, that was... A <laughs> I was busy thinking about the previous jump, and we caught that up all completely. Yeah, when it's hitting the hitting the landing, it's actually... I don't know whether it's just the, the, the line that I'm taking or the way I'm hitting the ground. It's actually tipping the car a little bit to the left. Normally, if you're taking off straight, which I thought I was, the car will fly straight, and it'll be landed nicely for the next jump. So that's a little bit... A little bit peculiar. Might have just been a bit of bad luck, just the particular exact position on the road I was. So that is something to bear in mind for those final jumps. So it is the final run for the Z4. I think I learnt plenty on that previous run. I was really just throwing the car about. It's got a lot of it has got a lot of grip, it can carry a lot of corner speed. There there are most definitely limits to what it can do. And the landing of the big jumps are a little bit awkward in places. So yeah, I'm kind of aware of that now and uh, she'll know what to be what to be doing. Carrying as much speed as I dare through turn two. And we can be very, very late on the break. I'm not sure what the best stopping car is that we've had in this series. It's probably between this and the Ferrari. I'm perhaps a little, maybe even the Talbot, actually, for that matter. The Talbot was pretty damn good under braking. Use the puddle to slightly get the car <laughs> to get the car turned through that, uh, that corner now. Don't end up in the concrete on the outside. The bumps are nasty. I think, actually, if you take a wider turn in, you avoid the worst of that secondary bump, although you do sometimes end up on a slightly wonky line further down the course. So it's just things to be aware of uh, around those corners. A big bump mid-turn there as well. I'd like to throw the car off course. Now, we are a little bit too... Oh, no, actually, we're about spot-on positioned for this next corner. That was... Very, very late under braking, but it did the job. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a little bit... That was one of those moments where I thought, oh, have I done a... Have I made a mistake there on where I've got on the brakes? But no, it seemed... It seemed like the car was uh, happy to do all of that as we now begin the climb up towards Netta. Yet another one, sorry, of these large jumps sort of position the car in the middle of the road. Although, as I say that, we got a really awkward landing over there. I've not had too many problems on that... Uh, on that jump and slow car okay, probably probably could have stayed in fourth gear gear ratio is quite short on this car actually not quite not always quite a hundred percent sure what i want to be in for some of these turns yeah water is uh, less than less than fun in the bmw but not the worst we have seen 
can't quite dive through it in the same way I could with the Ram Runner. Not particularly surprising though. Now, here we go, lining it up for this back stretch. Got to do little movements down here. It's so easy to get the car unhappy across these bumps. Now, we are lined up nicely for the first part. Uh, yeah, it does. It gets tipped left on, on the landing of the jumps. Now, we haven't carried as much speed across those jumps as the Ferrari. I mean, that's about as much as I can do in the BMW, but it isn't as quick as the Ferrari across there as we round final corner, run towards the line. It's a 2.35. I think it was 2.35.7 in the end. Yes, it was for the BMW. Yeah, it is It's a little bit down across those big jumps. I think it's the, it's the, the landing of the first one just you lose that momentum that you didn't with the Ferrari. I, I had the briefest of glances at the speed. I think it's about 10 miles an hour down. When it hits the ground, it just loses that bit more speed. And then you're going slower when you hit the second jump and you lose that bit more speed on landing as well from that one. So the 288 actually did very, very well across those jumps. I don't think I could have got those, again, could have got those jumps much better. In the BMW, that's about as good as you're probably going to get with a sports car. And it does get tipped a little bit to the left on landing. So you've got to kind of aim the car and be aware of that for whatever reason. It is, uh, it is doing that one. The time for the Z4 is very much in the crowded area of this uh, rally car build table. It will go into 11th place. It loses out to the RX-7 and the Ferrari 166. Uh, likewise, it is uh, almost a second down on the 288 GTO. It does, however, beat the Subaru SVX, the Ford uh, Pursuit Ute, the BAC model, the Opel Manta. Yeah, it's a good car. The Z4, you know, it's a fun enough car to drive down this course. It does have a couple of uh, little issues. Um, just, I think, lacks the power-to-weight ratio and the sheer power of the, the very fastest cars down here. But, yeah, for a, for a lucky dip build... Was, it was you know, certainly nice to drive something that I, I haven't touched on a Forza game for <laughs> many, many years. And was certainly certainly a pleasant car to go rallying with. However, that is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>